not to be looking at here. Week 17 already. Welcome to 49ers Live. Kiana Morton joined by 49ers cornerback K1 Williams coming off of that nail biter against the Los Angeles Rams. 49ers sweep the Rams coming off of Saturday's game. Given that it's a Saturday, was that your first career game on a Saturday? How was that? Was it bizarre for you at all? Because it was for me. It was, but uh, I mean, you got to be adaptable and just adjust to it. So it was a great game, though. Yeah. Was there, did you get a chance to maybe watch any of the games? Now having a Sunday off, which we don't get that often around here, but yeah. did you get a chance to watch football? Did you kind of remove yourself from football? Uh, I watched a few games uh, after I got my recovery in, but I, I caught uh, back in a few games. Did you get to catch maybe by chance that uh, Seattle Arizona game? Uh, just a little bit of it. A little bit of it? Yeah. You'll get to watch more uh, while you guys look at plays and breaking down the game ahead of next, week, next week's game. But first, we might as well jump into the highlights from this past game on Saturday as the 49ers got the win at home, the regular season home finale against the Rams. Let's check out those highlights. 49ers win the coin toss, opt to defer. LA scores on their first drive. Richie James Jr. ducks and dodges the kick return. 81 yards to inside of the Rams, 20. Almost reminded me of last year's return versus Seattle. His longest return of the season, second longest of his career. The 49ers settle for a field goal to put three points on the board early. Robbie Gold, good as gold. Rams score again after a Jimmy Garoppolo interception. Now, Debo Samuel time. The rookie powers his way to a first down and then some. Samuel picks up 18 yards on that one. Not to be outdone, Kyle Juszczyk, very next play. All 49ers offensive weapon moves the 49ers into the red zone as he picks up 23 yards right here. Mike McGlinchey as his as the full blacks lead blocker right there. The very next play, San Francisco caps off the drive with Debo Samuel taking the handoff up the left sideline into the pylon for the 49ers first touchdown of the game. Not sure which was better choreographed, that play design or the celebration, still up for debate. Rams score again and the 49ers respond back, driving down the field and Raheem Mostert goes untouched on his way into the end zone. A 16 yard tutty, his fifth consecutive game with a rushing touchdown. 49ers cut the lead to four. Now, one of the biggest plays of the game, less than a minute in the half, Fred Warner never takes his eyes off of golf or the ball. He comes down with his first interception of his career, and it's his first pick six since his junior year at BYU. Fred's been fantastic all year long. 49ers take the lead 24 to 21. Second half, Garoppolo threw his second pick of the game. No points scored off the turnover. Graham's kicker, Greg Zerline, missed the 52-yarder. Fourth quarter, Garoppolo, play action. He finds George Kittle. The 49ers wanted a little breathing room and, well, they obviously got it. 36 yards right there by the tight end. And this is why George Kittle dominates with yards after the catch. Next play, Tico Raw, Tevin Coleman mans his way to another first down. He gets 12. The 49ers are rolling. The next play, Garoppolo finds Ross Dwelly, 25 yards. An unnecessary roughness penalty, attacked on another 15. Third and goal, Garoppolo under pressure, rolls out of the pocket. The people's tight end comes down with the ball. Seven yard touchdown as the 49ers regain the lead. Now Rams respond with the field goal. Game is tied at 31 apiece. Two minute drill, let's go. Third and 16, Jimmy Garoppolo finds Kendrick Bourne up the middle for 18 yards. That's a first down. Another third and 16. Garoppolo dials one up to Emmanuel Sanders. His arm was hit on that throw. 46 yards to the receiver. Looks like miscommunication on the DBs and 49ers move into field goal range. Faithful are loving it. It's Robbie Gold time from 33 yards out. It's good as gold. 49ers with a walk off victory against the Rams. And that's all she wrote. 49ers sweep the Rams for the first time since 2011. Jimmy Garoppolo, although not perfect, had a near perfect final 10 minutes of the game going six of eight for 134 yards and one touchdown for a passer rating of 156.3. That included those huge third down conversions we just saw. Garoppolo has led three game winning drives in the last six games. 49ers defense held Gurley and co to under 75 yards on the ground. Coming off of that win in week six, did this team expect the Rams to bring like a completely different offense than what you guys saw in the earlier part of the season? Uh, we wasn't sure, but we knew they were trying to attack us in a certain way. Um, early on in the game, we had to make a few adjustments um, in the second half to kind of contain our boots and uh, screens. But after a while, we just kind of caught up to it and guys started playing sound. 
49ers fourth straight game that came down to the final seconds. Defense managed to get the stop on the Rams on their final drive. But how much confidence when you guys are off the field now it's two minutes left in the game. How much confidence did you guys have in Jimmy Garoppolo being able to take this team to the end zone? Uh, the ultimate confidence. He's our leader. He's our guy we trust in in those last crunch time moments. And when he's out there, man, I mean, we just sit back and, and watch him execute and deliver on those big third downs. Several clutch players in that final drive, but several clutch players actually throughout the entire game. And one that we have to mention is obviously George Kittle, who is the Yahoo Fantasy performer of the game. George Kittle, five catches for 79 yards and a touchdown. All five of his catches resulted in either a first down or a touchdown. Kittle's now 33 yards shy of his second consecutive 1,000 yard season, which he can obtain this Sunday against the Seahawks. You've been around him for three seasons now. What makes a guy like George Kittle? I feel like we all have our own answers, but you playing against him at practice, what makes a guy like George so special? Uh, this is mindset, his mentality. He works hard, he puts in the time. Um, you just know you're gonna get, you know what I'm saying, a fierce competitor coming at you every play. He's gonna block in the run game. He's gonna make big catches. He aggressive after the uh, Yak King. He just gonna, you know, just impose his will on his opponents. So I mean, just going against him a lot. I watch him grow these past three years, and it's just amazing. He turned himself into a great leader, and shoot, one of the best tight ends in the, in the league right now. Is that his nickname, the Yak King? No, nah, I'm just sick. You know, <laughs> get a lot of yaks. So well, it could yeah, be. He does. Yeah. He gets a lot of yaks. George Kittle, your yeah. Yahoo fantasy performer yeah. of the game, A.K.A. Yak King. There we go. <laughs> but George wasn't the only standout in the game. Um, according to Pro Football Focus, you earned the second highest grade of the 49ers on Saturday, bar just barely behind Fred Warner, mm -hmm. following your performance, tallying a quarterback hit, a hurry on your blitzes. You were extremely effective from the slots. Do you view going in for a blitz like as an extra perk of your job? Yeah, I mean, I feel like once you they take you out of coverage as a DB. You have to you have to produce some sort of a rush. You got to be able to get to that quarterback. You know, you're not in coverage, and I know our other guys. They're covering guys, so I want to get home for our guys. It wasn't just quarterback hits and quarterback hurries. You also had a forced fumble yeah. against the Rams. Your fourth forced fumble of the year, which according to Pro Football Focus, which is the most of any cornerback through 16 weeks. I think it's perfect time to jump into some of those plays with your origin DNA of a play. You have the Telestrator. Let's run through that first one, that forced fumble uh, against the Rams. Let's break down that one. All right. Um, so as you can see, um, it's a wide stack out here. Um, as you throw the screen, I set the edge, and my eyes is right here on the ball. As soon as I set a hard edge, boom, I put my hand on the ball. And then right there, and then I just hit him with the lawnmower, and the ball came right up. Is that something that I, I love how you, you guys call it the lawnmower, but is yeah. this something that you guys focus on at practice every day? Yeah, it's something we emphasize is just attacking the ball and just being aware where you are on the field and, and just making sure your focus is on that ball. And just right here, I know Fred and our other guys pursuing. You got Eric, you got Sherm, Defoe, all those guys pursuing. So my job, if I'm there to the scene first, is just to break the ball out. Not, again, four forced fumbles this season leads all NFL cornerbacks. We've got another, another one that we want to talk about, and this is, I'm going to take it back. Given that we will be facing Seattle in week 17, we got to go back to that Seattle game because you had several game-changing plays in that one. Mm -hmm. And I want to start off with the forced fumble against Chris Carson where Defoe recovered. So let's jump to that one. Okay. Um, right now we're sending pressure off the edge. Um, I'm timing my blitz right here. And I got to clear the mesh between running back and a uh, quarterback. And uh, as I see him hand the ball off, I take a quick picture at the ball and I just dove and just attack the ball right there and then secure the tackle. And bam, the ball's out. I remember watching this live. It was just so much going on mm -hmm. at one time that I didn't know what happened. I yeah. just saw the team jumping up and, you know, throwing their hands saying it's going mm -hmm. that way. It's offensive ball now. Mm -hmm. it, it, when you're in there, are you seeing it? I mean, because you got to look, it's like a bunch. It's like nothing but bunches. Mm -hmm. But you're so focused on Chris Carson. Is, does it ever kind of black out for you or you you're so focused in on the ball that now I'm aware, I'm present in the moment. I'm yeah. real present in the moment. I'm aware what's going on. So I, I'm, not, I'm just, my whole, my whole objective is just looking where I, my eyes on my keys and just trying to find the ball 
or who has the ball and I'm just trying to rip it out at this moment right here. So as I dive and I swing, I'm just securing a tackle. I feel the ball out, but I'm making sure that the guy that I tackle is not going to be able to recover it. Uh, we've had quite a few guys on the show, and every time they mention you, it's K1 the Shark. Yes. And you embrace the name, obviously, the Shark, right? Yes. <laughs> we have one more that we have to show, and this one is a strip sack. Huge play uh, against Russell Wilson. Uh, we're going to give you the credit for that sack. I don't care what anyone else says. Okay. Let's run through this second play. All right. All right, so they were setting up a screen right here. And Bosa, Bosa chips the tight end, which um, slows Russell down. And I had a one-on-one -on -one with the running back right here at the top. And as I win my rush, my, once again, my eyes is right here on the ball. Swipe at it, and I tackle him. And then me and Eric combine both of the ball out. Then you got our stack monsters. And Fred, Fred and Defoe just made a great play, just finishing it off. And, you know, big momentum swim for our team at that time. What did you call them? Your, your, the stack? Stack, stack, stack monsters. Stack monsters. Yeah, they running out the stack. As you can see right here, one on one with the back. As I beat them, I'm focused on the ball. Swing at it. The ball pops out. Fred. <laughs> and then you got our guys right here hustling. I believe after this game, we had Defoe on the show, and his response was, what is this old lineman doing with the ball? Yes. Like, <laughs> did your mind kind of go that same way? Like, what is he doing? I mean, I knew I sacked him, and I, I thought the play was blown dead, and I seen him with the ball, and I couldn't believe it. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, Fred, he just made a great play, a punch at the ball, you know. Me and him always competing on to see who could get, it, get the most out. Definitely looking forward to seeing you two yeah. compete this Sunday against yeah. Seattle. Uh, thank you so much. K1, the coach slash the shark for your origin DNA of a play. Well, now that you guys are looking ahead, which is now, you know, a whole new week, but how much was this team's mind thinking about what lied ahead in week 17 when you guys were playing the Rams? Or were you guys kind of keeping it one game at a time, keeping your focus on LA? Our, our focus was just one game at a time. You know, we just not looking ahead, just being present in the moment, just being focused and everything on our next games. It's a winner-takes-all game for the 49ers. 49ers can clinch the number one seed with a win over Seattle on Sunday. Lots of storylines surrounding this game, but how are you guys managing to keep out all of that outside noise despite everything that's being said surrounding this game? Uh, just keeping our mindset the same as it was at the beginning of the year. You know, just keeping our head down, just grinding, um, just being focused and just knowing what's important at the time, and that's just winning at, right now. Given that you guys, we talked about this just a few minutes ago, but being that you guys played on Saturday, how beneficial will this extra day of rest be for this team heading up to the Pacific Northwest? Uh, you know, it'll be great. You know, get, get some guys back, you know, heal up. Uh, just, just want to be in our top form coming up in this game right here. Game was flexed to prime time, 49ers on Sunday night football. Uh, years before, it's like games were being taken away from this team. Mm -hmm. Now it's like they're handing them off to you guys, getting these prime time games. Does that add to any extra excitement for this locker room? Um, just a night game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just, just a night game. Just a night game, man. We just play our football, man. It's something we've been doing as kids, so it's just exciting just to play under the lights and have a great game. What was your biggest takeaway looking back at that week 10 game against Seattle going against Russell Wilson, knowing what he can do? I know they're dealing with a lot of injuries right now, but knowing what kind of threat he can be both with his arm and his legs. What have you been able to take away from that? Uh, just the game is never over. You know, he's, his ability to extend plays, you know, really could stretch a game out. So you just got to be on your keys. You got to be focused throughout the whole entire game because, you know, he can extend plays and just make great plays happen. So for us on defense, it's just being sharp. 49ers in a position they haven't been in in a very long time. They're still in control of their destiny. We'll need to get that win in week 17 in Seattle. Again, flexed to prime time Sunday night football on NBC. NBC, uh, K1, appreciate having you. This was a lot of fun. I know you got some work to do, so yeah. we're going to let you go. But make sure you guys catch up on 49ers.com, everything leading up to this week 17 game and everything that's on the line. And with that, K1, appreciate you. Thanks and for we'll having me. We'll see you guys Sunday.